would you describe your role? Because you mentioned that you've kind of dived into different bits, a little bit more senior, and I guess you're looking after more things now in your role now in comparison to before. But how would you describe your role to someone who isn't necessarily familiar with community management? Because this is something that in, I guess, in the culture or in outside of our universe, a lot of people are not familiar with community management as an actual career. Um, so how would you describe your role to someone who isn't familiar to this at all? <laughs> Absolutely. So I'll back us up to 2022, which is when I started um, transitioning from working on the operational and process side of things to actually starting to interact with the community. So there are two separate pieces that I think will make it really clear what the job actually looks like. So I mentioned those two communities before. Um, we have the community of our users, which we did a lot of um, research and we picked a platform. So um, now it's a part of Gainsight. Uh, it's a community management software. And so there we're talking with around 2000 people who use our product. So that's a more like tactical, help oriented, um, feature related community where we speak to people who are actually users of the Yapo products. We have five different products, which you can <laughs> look at on our website. And then the second community is the community that I mentioned, which is women in the industry. So it's actually very interesting back in, 2018, our marketing team did an ideation competition, like a fun hackathon internally. And this idea came up where one of the female leaders on our team was like, there's not enough representation of women in e-commerce. Yeah. So we yeah. want to be able to look out in the industry and see what are women doing in the industry that's really exceptional, who has a great story to tell and how can we celebrate these women? So. We started a program where each fall we collect nominations of women in the industry who are doing really incredible things. And then in the spring around International Women's Day, we announce a class of women, which is normally around 40 women yeah. that we're honoring for their contributions to the industry, for the inspiring people that they are. Mm -hmm. And over the years, we've been able to also turn that into a community of people who attend events, a community of women who join us on Slack. Now, I believe it's nearly 4,000 women. Amazing. We can just share, you know, who needs a freelancer, who has an open job, anything, everything, and the kitchen sink. And so the way that I communicate with those communities is quite different because they're serving completely different purposes, but it is all people from the e-commerce industry. So it's really interesting to figure out how you can engage those different groups based on what value they're looking for. Yeah, no, of course. And you mentioned celebrating women, which I think is amazing. It's it's such an important initiative. And I think more companies need to be strong representatives of that. So kudos to you and your team for doing that because, you know, not a lot of companies do. And I think that you guys are great examples of, you know, what other people should definitely be doing. Um, and I just wanted to ask, based off of that information, are the women that you're highlighting global or is it just US focused? Um, and this is just out of interest because I'm based in the UK. So I'm just thinking, are you is it a global front or are you just focusing more so on the United States and then working your way out? It's a global program. Um, we have a pretty strong presence um, in the UK and also in Australia. So the nominees tend to be focused in those three geographies, but we have had nominees from other countries before. Yeah. It's just that e-commerce is a little bit different, obviously, in all the different areas of the world. So even from our perspective, like the way we work in the UK market or the Australian market is just a little bit different based on what's happening there um, and what's going on in the market. But yes, that is a global program. Yeah. And one other thing that I wanted to just mention, because I talked about a little of the past, because I think it's like the most concrete way to understand what my role is. But I think looking toward the future is the most interesting thing that I could talk about. So uh, let me just say a couple of words about that, if, oh, if it's all right. Oh, cool. um, what I'm working on now is 
with a couple of other really brilliant people on my team specifically and genuinely the support of the entire organization, but I'm looking at now the community of D to C marketers as like our new frontier. Um, these are the people we believe we have, or in a unique position to deliver, deliver a lot of value to. So I just, with my team announced a new project a couple of weeks ago. It's called is typing and it's a newsletter that will go to D to C marketers each week. And our goal is to keep this group of people really inspired. So we figured what's the best way to inspire them is to actually go into the community and each week to feature a different marketer. Mm -hmm. So they come to me and they're like, Hey Liz, here are the best three texts or emails I've received from a brand. And this way, we build a community of marketers 